Hey guys, you're watching Python tutorial videos on my YouTube channel, Python for Microscopists. So this video is the continuation of my previous uh, uh, video where I discussed about the general plan for image segmentation. And as I mentioned before, the step number one for our traditional machine learning based image segmentation is feature extraction. So let's uh, write the few lines of code, uh, which we have already written in one in, in uh, our previous tutorials where we discussed about Gabor filter. So hopefully I can copy and paste some of the code, but of course I'll make sure I explain uh, uh, any necessary steps. So let's jump into our spider interface and uh, start coding. And let's start by understanding the images itself. What problem are we trying to solve? So in this case, I have uh, an image. Let's go ahead and open these two images. These images, these are uh, micro CT scans or X-ray microscope scans of a sandstone. And you can see the bright regions are some heavy material. The, the uh, gray regions are quartz and uh, or SiO2. And these, uh, uh, the textured regions right here uh, is some sort of a clay. So what I've done is took like a paintbrush and painted like all the pixels. You don't have to necessarily fill in every pixel, you know, uh, you can handle that in the code if you only do partial uh, labeling. But in this example, I've labeled every pixel where I said, okay, the green regions are, uh, they correspond to the clay, the bright region corresponds to whatever this, uh, you know, uh, the yellow in here and red is my quartz and the pores are all in blue. Okay. And in fact, uh, my volume or uh, this, this, this specific material that has been imaged, you know, I have uh, about 500 images that actually make up the total volume of this. So, of course, manual segmentation and going through every slice and trying to, you know, uh, uh, validate it, it's, it's, not an, uh, it's not an easy task. And also doing manual segmentation, I mean, semi-automated by using histogram or watershed is also not uh, promising, at least I uh, tried that, it's not promising, that's because of uh, multiple reasons. One, let's say uh, the gray level between this uh, texture, you know, the, these uh, uh, clay materials, you know, and some of these other regions, it's not, it, it's very similar. So it's very difficult to segment that. Also, when you do uh, some sort of a CT analysis, you see artifacts, you know, I don't know if you can see, but this area appears to be very dense or very bright, and uh, which results in some sort of, uh, sort of shadowing. And that can uh, that can be pretty uh, painful if you try to segment this region any other way. So for this, machine learning is very promising, and that's the reason I'm actually using this. So this is the context, and I know uh, the file names and everything. So let's go ahead and start uh, writing the code. So st obviously, step number one: importing the right libraries. So as usual, let's uh, import the standard libraries, import NumPy as NP, and then let's import uh, OpenCV so we can read images and apply some uh, uh, image processing uh, functions. So import uh, pandas as uh, PD, yeah? Pandas to handle our data as data frames. Okay, so once we import this, let's go ahead and import our image. Okay, so my image equals to cv2.imread and my image is in a folder called images, training images, I think it's train images, and uh, it's called uh, sandstone underscore versa 12340s.tiff. Okay. So this is my input image just to make sure I typed everything correctly. Let me go ahead and run this. And as you can see, this is an image of 1024 by 996 each image. And looks like this is an RGB image because I see three channels here. And that's not supposed to be an RGB image. And maybe by converting the original format into a TIFF format, I may have converted them into RGB format from the original grayscale. So let's uh, fix that by typing... Uh, by converting them into gray, cv2 dot uh, cvt color, and uh, what image do we want to convert? IMG. It's cvt dot color underscore bgr to. Let's do gray level. Okay. Again, sanity check. Run it. 
and uh, as you can see now this is 1024 by 996 okay so so far so good now let's go ahead and start by uh, creating an empty data frame okay I'm gonna call my data frame as DF you can give whatever name you're comfortable with so D PD dot data frame and this is an empty data frame okay so if I run this again it's an empty data frame with nothing in it let's start adding features to this data frame now okay so this is where now we started to engineer our features which features do we need for our machine learning algorithm so feature number one is always the most important feature would be the pixel value itself if you look at the image up here you can see that the pixel value tells us a lot about what it could be so the bright pixel value for example anything above 200 it's a good chance that this is this pyrite or bright phase right here okay anything below I don't know maybe 40 or something this could be this outer area which is air and some sort of an organic stuff uh, out there that's uh, maybe a tape that's uh, wrapped around this sample okay so the feature number one is our original pixels uh, itself so let's say uh, add original pixel values okay to the data frame as feature number one okay and how do we do that again to create a new column you just call the uh, data frame in in our case it's df and label it so I'm gonna call this original let's say image or original pixel values that would be too big of a name so let's just go ahead and do that now uh, pandas is almost like Excel for uh, Python right I mean it's uh, probably uh, not right to say that but again for those of you who do not know pandas you know it's it's kind of think of it as excel uh, for python so what do we have in an excel sheet we have columns and rows so original image this is one of my many features that i'm going to add so this is let's say my column number one so i'm calling it column number one but if you look at the image this is obviously a 2d image right two-dimensional image how can i add that in like one column Basically, what I'm trying to get to here is uh, you cannot do add this two-dimensional, you know, matrix into one single column. So we have to unwrap it. So I'm going to define a new parameter called image2, which is nothing but reshaped image1 or image. Okay, when I put minus one here, that says basically reshape my image into single column. That's pretty much it. And now I can just add image two pixel values as uh, the row values for my original image so if i run this again sanity check it says okay has no attribute reshaped that is because it is just reshape okay it's a typo now let me go ahead and run it there you go so if you look at the variable explore, explorer on the top right here now my image two is nothing but 1024 multiplied by 996 that many pick uh, that uh, uh, you know entries and my data frame has one column and the column name is uh, uh, original image okay let's uh, go ahead and have a look at it okay print data frame dot head which prints the top five rows okay so there you go so the top five rows is nothing but all zeros which is still fine this is a sanity check there so now what do we add add uh, 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 other features okay let's start adding other features well actually uh, uh, yeah uh, that's fine add other features so uh, first set would be Gabor okay this is my most favorite features again I'm not gonna repeat everything uh, in this tutorial because I've already done it and I hope I have done a good job in the original video where I talked about Gabor features which is literally the one before this uh, video or two before this video in the in the playlist so uh, let me open that other file and copy the uh, code so I'm copying all of these lines from the other code and pasting it here Go ahead and save it now let me explain for those of you who are a bit lazy to watch my video at least right now let me quickly summarize this so this is nothing but it generates a whole bunch of uh, features from the original image by applying various Gabor filters okay 
A Gabor filter is think of a uh, uh, a filter such as Gaussian filter or uh, other type of canny edge detection filter or any of those filters, right? So all you're trying to do is define a kernel and running the kernel onto your image to generate a response uh, from, from this uh, convolution. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. All I'm doing is, first of all, look at the kernel itself, okay? So this is the Gabor kernel. Uh, let me decrease or make more room so you can see it. Okay, so the Gabor kernel is nothing, but it has a kernel size, which I defined as, uh, if I can see up here, where is the kernel size? As nine. Yeah, this is a nine by nine. In fact, let's change it to five. Five gives a better one for our image. So the kernel size uh, is K size, and another parameter is sigma, and I'm changing sigma two times here, zero and two, and I'm changing theta how many times? By uh, two right there. So I'm changing theta, I'm changing sigma, with values one and three, and I'm changing lambda uh, from zero to pi with a step size of pi over four, and my gamma is uh, 0.05 and 0.5, okay? 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.05 gives, uh, uh, you know, a high aspect ratio kernel, 0.5 gives somewhat a medium aspect ratio kernel. That's why I'm changing that again. I explained it in my video about Gabor. So uh, this code is nothing but it changes theta, generates a Gabor kernel. Changes sigma, generates a Gabor kernel. Generate uh, same thing with lambda and gamma. So this combination, I believe, gives like 32 different uh, filters. And each time a kernel is generated, we are actually running that kernel on image two or applying that kernel on image two, okay? And uh, looking at the response. And now we take that response or we take the filtered image and reshaping it to minus one because we want to convert that into a column and adding that to my uh, uh, data frame, okay? With a label called Gabor label. And what is Gabor label? Nothing but the text Gabor plus whatever that string name is. Like in this example, the first time would be Gabor one. The second time it applies, it would be Gabor two because I'm increasing number every time it goes through the loop. That's it, okay? Go ahead and study this code, but this is uh, as simple as it gets, okay? So now uh, the next step, let's actually go ahead and uh, print our data frame to see if it is doing what it is supposed to, okay? Let me create a bit of a room here. And now let's go back here, okay? So I'm going to print the same thing, df.head. Now we should see uh, more columns, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. And let me expand this side so you can see it. Okay, so it looks like while it's working, I'm actually printing uh, the Gabor, uh, wherever that print statement is down here. I'm actually printing the Gabor label and the values for theta, sigma, and others. So this is a good summary, right? I mean, you can see the first time Gabor one is nothing but theta zero, sigma one, lambda zero, gamma 0 0.05. And then everything else the same except for gamma. And then it goes back to gamma 0 0.05 and then changes lambda, okay? And then gamma. So it's going through this loop and uh, you can see my data frame has 33 columns now. The first column was the original image and the next 32 columns are all Gabor responses. I hope that makes sense. It's nothing but I'm, I created a Gabor filter bank and just generated a whole bunch of uh, responses by applying the Gabor filter bank, like each kernel onto the original image, okay? That's pretty much it. So if, at this point, we can actually go ahead and uh, 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 apply random forest, but just for the fun of it, let's add a few other, uh, let's add a few other uh, uh, feature extractors or filters, if you want to call it. So uh, let's say one of my favorite ones is canny edge, you know, so, and uh, you probably know what that is. It's again, as the name suggests, it's an edge detection uh, detecting filter. So I'm gonna just call this edges equals to CV2. I think it's an open CV, uh, canny. It's very easy to apply. It's just a image and then a minimum value and maximum value. Let's just say minimum is 100, maximum is 200, okay? So again, you can look at the uh, documentation for this. So once this is applied, again, I get an canny edged filtered image, but I need to reshape it. So I'm gonna just call this edges one equal to edges dot, sorry, reshape minus one. Okay, this creates one column. 
and uh, let's add that canny edge let's add a column called canny edge and the values are nothing but edges one okay I hope that makes sense so now you can add any number of uh, uh, such filters now let's go ahead and again uh, sanity check print data frame dot head so we can look at the top five columns run the code and oh I should have turned that print statement off but that's okay it's fast enough so we are fine you, you see canny edge column is added right here okay let's uh, go ahead and add again I'm not gonna I'm gonna uh, make this video you know uh, uh, faster accelerate this video but I'm gonna add uh, three four five or other uh, filters that you can see me type uh, uh, at high speed here okay So there you go. So uh, I typed whatever I could and then I copied from uh, 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 other files that I have. So uh, we are actually generating a whole bunch of Gabor filters in this case, like about 32 of them and uh, the original pixel values. And then we are adding additional columns, each for Canny Edge, Robert, Sobel, Shar, Pruitt, Gaussian with a sigma value of three, Gaussian with a sigma value of seven, median with sigma equals to three, you can add more medians if you want, and uh, uh, variance with a sigma uh, size of three. And the way I did variance is uh, basically, uh, you know, uh, calculated the, uh, uh, you know, variance using the uh, variance function in NumPy, that's pretty much it. Okay, so now final sanity check where we can actually look at print df dot head to make sure everything is okay. Okay, that part is working fine. It's taking its time. I realized that this np dot this variance part is a bit slow. So if you don't want that, you can go ahead and suppress it because some of that is actually covered as part of our Gaussian. So, I mean, sorry, uh, Gabor filter. So we may not need that. It's up to you, okay? So there is our uh, there is our final data frame. And again, if you want to just look at uh, how it is by removing the variance, I bet it would be much faster. There you go. Okay, so let's not worry about variance for now. Okay, let's just uh, leave that and uh, continue. Okay, so one last step before we move on, which is adding another column, right? I mean, we're not done yet. So far, we've added all the feature columns. That's it. Now we need to add another column that corresponds to this image. So now that we have added at every pixel, what is the pixel value? What is Gabor 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, up to 32? And then what's our Gaussian, uh, uh, the value coming from the Gaussian pix uh, uh, filtered image, median image, and so on. But we haven't told what the ground truth is. This is, by rem uh, please remember that we are doing training, right? Meaning we need to tell what the ground truth is. So how do we tell what the ground truth is? Basically, we just read this image, get the pixel values, and then assign to the corresponding uh, 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 row. So how do we do that? Well, exactly as we have done before. So let's just import our labeled image. Okay, so our labeled image equals to cv2.imread. Okay, and where is my labeled image located? Images train masks. Okay, this is where I stored my labels. I gave it the same name to keep things simple, sandstone underscore versa, one, two, three, four zeros dot uh, tiff. So if I scroll back up, I'm doing nothing different than what we have already done. So this is the original image, and I converted that into the uh, gray level here. Let's do the same even uh, for this one. 
and then we added that to the data frame. So I'm going to do exactly the same here. So I have my labeled image and I'm going to convert that into a gray image and then reshape it, right? So, sorry, this is not labeled. This is LAB labeled image and then uh, all we're doing is convert this red, green, yellow, funky looking uh, image into the gray level image. And we know what the next step is labeled image one equal to labeled image dot reshape. OK, again, we are adding a column. So dot reshape into a single column. And now I can go ahead and add this as the final column. And I'll call this labels Okay, is equal to labeled image one that's it so one final time print df dot head now we should see the full picture okay so these are all different gabors and then for each of this it uh, generates uh, the response adds it and then you can see the final uh, uh, final value right there I mean final column that we just added which is nothing but labels so my labels are 29 and uh, uh, labeled image I only see 29 here but there are more labels you know 29 is what we see for the first few pixels which apparently seems to be the background pixels anyway so this is uh, data handling. I mean, again, bulk of the time that you spend doing these machine learning tasks is uh, at actually getting the data ready for analysis. And this is uh, this is most of what I uh, showed you right now is uh, pretty standard. Okay. So now we have a data frame with all the required columns, and at every column we have numbers or some entry. In my previous tutorial, again, I talked about uh, if you don't have, like if you have missing data, you can drop those, uh, you know, that missing data. But again, I'm not going to repeat that uh, for now. So uh, I think we have everything that we need. And in the next tutorial, let me, let's continue this by uh, splitting the data. Uh, in fact, didn't I promise to cover that as part of this tutorial? If so, let us, uh, uh, in fact, uh, let, I lied. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, continue that in our next tutorial because this one is already too long anyway. So let's uh, split the data into, uh, into training and testing data sets and train our machine learning algorithm and then uh, validate the results in the next tutorial. So again, I hope you found this to be useful, but stay tuned. We are not done yet. Okay, thank you very much.